Hey, welcome to I Can Alter Exat with coaches Alex and John. This is John here. Today we're going to cover Alteryx challenge number three, where we're going to try to make three and six month running averages for some values. Let's get started. All right, so we've got Alteryx weekly challenge number three here. This challenge, we've been given a data set of different engine categories, I guess. We've got 10 horsepower, 100 horsepower. We've got 19 different HP category values. We've got the year, a month, and then one, two, six different uh, measures that measure something. Uh, U, CAGI, U, I, R, D, whatever they mean. I don't know. Okay, and our goal is to create three and six month running averages for each of those columns. And then it says a hint for values that do not exist, set values to the closest row. Okay, so this is our starting data set and this is what we want. So there should be 12 extra fields there. We have 22 and here we have nine. Oh, there's a record ID field, so that's that 13th. All right, well, since there's a record ID field, let's just go ahead and start with that. Putting record IDs on is usually a really good tactic, especially when you're going to be transposing and cross-tabbing and you want things to stay, to stay in the same order. So that's just what I'm going to do here. Because we have to create running averages for each of these, rather than doing like six different uh, multi-row formulas, Let's go ahead and transpose this. So the key columns will be like all of our non-measures. So record, HP, year, and month. So now we'll have those four, a name column and a value column, where the name is the name of the measure and the value is that measure's value. So now you'll notice that the record IDs have been sorted together. But what we really want is the different name, the, the measures to be sorted together. Let's connect a sort tool and we'll sort first by name and then within, within each name we'll sort by record ID. We'll do that and now, now we'll see we have record ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, D, CAGI all the way down into however far it goes. So 1,368, which is good because that's the number of records we had in the initial data source. Okay. So now let's go ahead and actually try making a moving average for each of these. So to do that, there isn't like a, a moving average tool. There's a running total tool, which is great, but there's not a moving average tool. So what we'll have to do is grab a multi-row formula tool And let's call this a 3MA for three month average. Let's make it a double value for rows that don't exist. We'll set that to set to values of closest valid row, which kind of matches the hint that they gave us earlier. We're gonna wanna do this for each distinct value of name. So like when we get to the end of D CAGI, we don't wanna go through to the next name and start averaging the two together. And because we want a three month average, we actually need to set this number of rows back a level. The reason for that is we're gonna to need to do a row minus two. And if we actually set this, I'll show you. Let us do that really quickly. It doesn't know what row row two or row minus two value is. But if I bump this up, that error goes away. Okay, so a three month average is going to be two, row, two rows ago plus one row ago plus our current row. So that's sum divided by three. Now when we run that, we've got our three month average. So you see the first record is just the same. The second record should be the average of the first two. And then from then on, it's just going to be the, the previous three like it's supposed to be. 
So let's just focus on this three month average for the time being. We want to re we want to reformat it back into its original shape. So we bring a cross tab tool. We can group by record ID. Our columns will be the name columns because those are the, the names of the measures that we want. And now instead of value, we want our three month average to be the new values and we'll sum those. If we run that. All right, so now we've got Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be tough to compare. We'll just leave that for later. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for the six month average. So I'll just copy and paste that multi row formula. We'll call this 6MA. Bump this up to five rows. It actually doesn't matter if you go higher. Just as long as you get to the, as, as far up as you need it to be. We'll group by name again. And now we're simply going to add on, let's just copy this. That'll be row minus five. Row minus four. And row minus three. Of course, we're not dividing by three now, but we're dividing by six. That's what we got minus five, four, three, two, one, and the value. Let's connect another cross tab tool. Group by record ID, column headers is name, and the values will now be six MA. And sum those. Let's check our work. All right, you notice though, the, the column headers here all have the same names. So a, a quick way, like we could of course, I could use a select tool here and I could manually rename all these like 3MA, D, CAGI, and so on. But if I highlight all these by holding, clicking the top and bottom holding shift, I can add a prefix to those field names. I'll do a 3MA underscore. Only add it to highlighted fields. And just like that, we've automatically added that prefix to all those fields. Another way you could do that is in the developer tool palette. There's a thing called dynamic rename. I'll do this one down here. There's a rename mode that says add prefix or suffix. Select the records that you want to add. And we'll call this one 6MA underscore. And the results should be the same in either way. And we've got our three MAs and we've got our six MAs. So if we go back to the original output source, you'll notice we have the original six measure fields and then the three month and then the six month. So what I'm gonna do here, we'll use a join multiple tool and I want to connect our original data first, the three month second, and the six month third. The order doesn't really, it doesn't matter, like the, the order doesn't affect the output other than the order in which the fields are shown. So like if I had done the six month first, all this fields from the six month data set would come in first. So just to make things a little easier, that's why I put it in that specific order. We'll join everything on record ID. Again, that, that's why that record ID was so important there at the beginning of the workflow. So now we have an easy field to join on. Okay, and, and I, I deselected the record ID from the second and third inputs since we don't need that to be duplicated. And that, I think, will do it. As long as I didn't miss anything. I'm not seeing any numbers changing around. Oops. Yeah, I think we're good here. All right, and there you have it. That's how you can, what, take a bunch of different measures, transpose. I think the most difficult part here is probably the, the moving average field using the the multi-row formula for a moving average. 
repivoting it back into its original shape. We saw a couple different ways of adding prefixes to fields, and then we got to use a, a join multiple tool, which frankly I don't use very often. In any case, that's all I've got for you, so thanks for watching. As always, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Data Coach channel for more awesome lessons on Alteryx and all things data analytics and visualization. Follow Data Coach on Twitter at AskTessellation and follow me personally at jemery_dataviz. underscore Thanks again.